The Nightmare Dungeon patch is live. I ran a bunch of them last night on stream, and we're going to go over the numbers that I got, and we're going to see what we come up with, okay? So for starters, I'm seeing a lot of videos on YouTube already. I know it's YouTube, so I get it. Um, these people saying, oh my God, you're going to get so much experience from these. You're going to get, you're going to get 45 million experience. You're going to get 50 million experience, 60 million experience, so much experience. I can't stop leveling. I get it. It's YouTube. I know what they're trying to do. I understand. But realistically, those aren't numbers that most people are going to be seeing. Those numbers are because they are at a high level running a perfect build, basically with perfect gear on a whirlwind barbarian who is clearing these nightmare dungeons three, four levels higher than them in a minute and 30 seconds. That's not what most people are doing. So what I wanna to do today is I wanna take a realistic approach to these nightmare dungeons. I wanna go over the numbers that I got and I wanna focus on the things that should actually matter. So what I did last night was I ran 13 nightmare dungeons in about two hours. And I took my starting experience, my ending experience, I tracked what tier the Nightmare Dungeon was, the level difference between where I was at and what level the enemies were at the time, and I have them all up right now so you can see them on screen. So these are the numbers that we have to work with here. As you can see, my average here is right around 10 million, so I'm not breaking the bank or anything like that with my experience gains. But I leveled up twice, which is awesome. Quick disclaimer, going over the numbers here for Moggins Works, the fifth dungeon down that I went through. Uh, you can see that my ending experience was 12,451. Uh, and then I started up on the next dungeon. It was at 500K. Um, I actually leveled up halfway through that dungeon. So that was the total amount of experience that I would have gotten with the 514,000 added. Um, but I did end up leveling in that. It would have looked weird if I did starting at 11, ending at 500,000. So I just did it that way so that it could show the 1.3, 1.4-ish million experience that I got. But that's what happened there. It's all accounted for. Don't worry. Now, before people start clicking away because I'm not showing 30 million experience an hour, let me just say quickly that I am running an off-meta Necromancer build uh, based around summons, and it's it's not great. I have fun on it, but it's not a fast clearing class by any means. I'm not speed running any content. What we need to be focusing on is not the raw number because the raw number is subjective. It's going to change based on what level you are, what build you're running, what class you're running, what gear you have, your paragons, everything. There's so many different things that can change that number around that it is completely irrelevant because it's not about what's my number versus your number. It's about what is my number yesterday versus my number today. To get into my next point here, a lot of the videos that I'm seeing are also about one specific dungeon. Somebody did one dungeon, had a really good run where it was like, oh my God, I got, you know, 2 million experience in three minutes. So let's multiply that out. 2 million in three minutes means 40 million an hour. I'm getting 40 million an hour now. No, you're not. No, you aren't. Because... When it comes to these nightmare dungeons, you don't really have a ton of control. It's not like, ooh, I like this one. I'm just going to get a bunch of those. It's not how it works. If you look at my list, you can see that I did 13 dungeons in a row. All of them were as close as possible to my level, and I only repeated a dungeon twice in two hours. It was Wraithwing Wilds and Feral's Den. I did both of those twice. But other than that, these are just random. These are just, okay, whatever's closest to me, I'll bang that out. Next, next, next. And you're just going down the list. You can see my last Whispering Pines run got me almost 2 million experience, and that took me, what, like six minutes? So yeah, I could look at that and say, oh my god, I average 20 million an hour. No, I don't. I average 9.8 million an hour. I'm nowhere close to 20, but I can mess with the numbers to make it seem a lot better than it is. You see what I'm saying here? So it's all subjective. So instead of focusing on these made-up numbers, let's talk about what we can actually do to optimize our experience gain, right? The first step to optimizing your leveling is making sure that you are picking tiers of nightmare dungeons that are three levels higher than you that is where you are getting the most experience that is the experience cap of multiplier that you will receive is on enemies three levels higher you can kill something that's 20 levels higher than you their base experience will be higher but the difficulty multiplier maxes out at plus three so there's no real reason to be doing anything above that especially with nightmare dungeons where so much is out of your control just stick to plus three so in order to get enemies that are three levels higher than you you want to look at your nightmare dungeon tier and the way that you can figure this out is that whatever tier dungeon you have add 54 to it so yes i should have been doing tier 30s in order to stay at plus three but because that was the upper limit at the occultist when i was crafting these uh, i decided to just step it up to the next stage and make it a little bit harder on myself because i would rather be over than under i didn't want to risk it and end up getting enemies that weren't giving me the full benefit so i just said whatever and went with higher ones but if you can help it you should be doing the tier that is closest to plus three enemies 
as you can as you can get. So you're fighting enemies that are three levels higher than you. Perfect, you're doing everything right. Next, what we want to focus on is making sure we are always progressing forward as often as possible. A lot of these nightmare dungeons have big open areas. You're not really in control of, of what dungeon you have to do next, so you might not be familiar with the layout. Just progress and try not to backtrack at all if possible. I understand that sometimes you want to clear everything, you want to try to get as much experience as possible, but because beating these nightmare dungeons typically gives you 100,000, 200,000 experience at the end of it as a bonus, you want to try to clear these as fast as possible because odds are all of the backtracking that you're doing is not going to be more efficient than just powering through, leaving a few mobs behind, and getting that experience bonus for completion faster and moving on to the next one you want to try to rip through these as quickly as you can so the more linear you can make them and the more streamlined the better so there's a lot of people that are also guilty of this myself included but i think that one of the most important things that you can also do in order to optimize here is to make sure that you're adjusting your build accordingly so that you have whatever is the best for leveling if possible so if we're going through these nightmare dungeons right now with the sole purpose of leveling up, you're probably level 70, level 80, and you unlock nightmare dungeons at level 50, so maybe you're level 50. But either way, we are not 100 yet. We're going to come up with a ton of gold. We're going to see a ton of loot. It's really, really easy to try to pivot to the fastest clearing, best dungeoning build that you have for your class and just run that until you get to 100. Then you can have all the money and everything that you need to switch to whatever you want to be for your end game. But for the sake of leveling, I think that having the best possible build that you can have is extremely important. So while you may not want to be the spinning whirlwind barbarian in the end game where you're just running around and crushing everything, maybe it's best that you do it for leveling right now. And if you don't want to, that's fine. You don't have to, obviously. Play however the hell you want. But for the sake of optimization, the faster you can clear it, the faster you can move, the faster you will level up. Even if you're only shaving two minutes off per dungeon over an extended period of time that it will take you to get to level 100, that adds up to a lot of time saved. And again, don't focus on the big numbers so much. I don't want to see people get discouraged or upset or frustrated with the leveling process because they aren't seeing these huge numbers that the YouTubers or streamers or whatever are putting up. Those numbers aren't real. They really aren't. They aren't real. And if they are real, they are super, super, super niche. So focus on what you've got now. Focus on doing things the right way, the optimal way and understand that you will get there. It's a grind to 100 for sure, but this is a big step in the right direction from Blizzard here, and this patch has been huge. This is going to be really good stuff, and it's gonna go a lot faster than it did before. Just make sure that you're focused on the right things and level 100 will come. Thanks for watching. Have a great one, guys. Take it easy. Bye.